Hello, and welcome to the last of the films in the standard level periodicity topic. Um, like some of the other films, it involves some memorising of, of factual information. Um, but we're looking here at the oxides of period three elements, and what you'll see is that some of the things you simply have to remember, but some of the things should be able to figure out based on um, your knowledge of the bonding topic. So hopefully by the end of this film you'll understand why there's a gradual change in the nature of the bonding in the oxides of the period three elements. And you'll also be able to write equations that show why um, particular oxides have the acid base characteristics that they do. Okay, well let's start off by looking at the bonding because this is something we might um, be able to figure out for ourselves really. Um, we're starting, remember we're looking at the third period here, right? We're starting with metals on the left hand side. And when we get past aluminium, we've got non-metals. Now, hopefully you know that oxygen is a non-metal. So when we combine these metals with oxygen, we're going to get ionic bonds. Okay? So if you can understand that metals like to lose electrons and oxygen likes to gain them, then we'll form an ionic compound and you can therefore explain why the elements on the left of this period will form ionic bonds. You'll also be able to explain that these ones form covalent bonds because all these atoms want to gain electrons and so does oxygen, so they end up sharing electrons. Right? You might also, if you remember even more than that from the bonding topic, is spot the fact that this is one of those five substances that forms a covalent network. Okay, so if you were asked to describe how the bonding or the, how the nature of the bonding changes across this period amongst these oxides, we're starting off with ionic lattices, we're going through a covalent network and then ending up with covalent molecular substances. Okay, so in other words, once you know the bonding topic, there's really not, nothing extra to learn here. This might involve some extra learning um, if you haven't studied the acids and bases topic, but again, this will be something that you'll be able to figure out if you have done that topic already. Um, what you'll know if you have studied that topic is that metal oxides form or are termed bases. That is to say, they dissolve in water to form alkaline solutions, okay, or they react with acids. Non-metal oxides are acids. Okay, so when we're talking about the acid base character, what we're really saying is, are these things acids or bases? Okay, the annoying thing, I suppose, is that in this period, there's something a bit odd happening. So if we've got the bases here, and the acids over there, we've got something which can't really make up its mind. Aluminium oxide is unusual because it will react with not only not only will it react with bases and therefore act like an acid but it will also react with acids and therefore act like a base and something that does that something that has both acidic and basic properties is called amphoteric now the nice thing in the standard level course is that you don't have to write equations to show why aluminium oxide is amphoteric and the other bit of good news is that you don't have to write equations for all the oxides reacting with water and showing why they are acidic or basic when they do that. Okay, but you do have to do it for these four. Okay, so here's how we do it. Now, sodium oxide reacts with water. The oxide ion basically takes an H plus ion away from the water, leaving you with OH minus, and we've now got two OH minus ions and two sodium ions, so we're going to have two sodium hydroxides. As I say, by the time you've done the acids and bases topic, that's going to make a lot more sense because you'll know more about proton transfer, you'll know about the fact that bases take H plus ions away from acids, and in this case the water is acting as an acid, but that's something for the acids and bases topic, not so much for the periodicity topic. If you can write that equation, then you can answer a question from the periodicity section of the exam. Okay, what will magnesium oxide do? Well, it will also react with water, and in the process, it will turn into magnesium hydroxide. So, as we saw before, when we were looking at the alkali metals film, these hydroxides are going to, if they dissolve in water, they're going to make my solution alkaline. In other words, they're 
forming basic solutions and that's because these oxides react with water the way they do to produce hydroxide ions. Now these two are a little bit more complicated, well in particular this one is because there's some balancing involved whereas those two are quite simple in terms of their balancing and again by the time you've done the acids and bases topic you'll probably be familiar with the acids that they form. You might know the formula for phosphoric acid and certainly hopefully you would by the time you've done the acids and bases topic but if you know that P4O10 forms phosphoric acid and that this is the formula for, for phosphoric acid then balancing this shouldn't be too tough we've got four phosphoruses there we've got one there so we put a four there that gives us 12 hydrogens so we need six waters and now there's 16 oxygens there and 16 oxygens there. Sulfur trioxide reacts with water to form another well-known acid and that's called sulfuric acid which if you don't already know the formula you certainly will by the time you've done the acids and bases topic and as you can see here if you add up the atoms that equation is already balanced. Okay, So there's four equations to remember each of them showing a reaction with water Okay, so when you're asked to explain the acid-base character of an oxide, you need to write an equation to show it reacting with water and producing either an... We've got the acids here, okay, and we've got the bases over here. Okay, so metal hydroxides in solution will be alkalis, or they'll be forming basic solutions. Metal uh, Non-metal oxides, when they react with water, will form acids in solution. So yeah, as I say, there was some more facts to remember there, um, but hopefully they're clear what they are. And hopefully you can use your knowledge from the bonding topic to explain why there's a gradual change um, in the nature of the bonding as we go from one oxide to another in period three. And hopefully, as I say, you can remember how you're going to write equations to show, um, in particular, those four oxides acting as acids or bases but hopefully you remember the general pattern of acid base character as well. Um, if there's any questions or any comments you'd like to make please feel free to post something on YouTube or to come and see me.